June is on her way. It's pouring rain, a little unsafe. So she's on her way. She will pop in when she arrives. Safety is important. Safety is important. Yes, there we go. Um, Okay, thank you all for joining us. We are doing kind of a, a very sort of thematic white guilt called uh what everyday racism everyday racism yeah every day i think this one's good because it drives me crazy gerard like when people write and they write it all the time um something about slavery well i i didn't enslave people so i have i'm not racist or you know whatever yeah, sure yeah yeah oh i appreciate that <laughs> yeah it happened Great. hundreds of years ago and nothing is there's nothing racist going on right now yeah. right um, uh, once we got a black president, everything was even Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Look what that did for the That's country. All good. Yeah. It's all good. So, um, anyway, so we thought that we would talk about this. And I also think like as a white person, I am not privy to a lot of obviously experiences that you have and have only kind of woken up, not using the word woke, maybe, but I've only woken up to kind of some of the stuff that, um, different groups of people go through um, that I was not aware of because I'm a white woman and I'm aware of like stuff that women go through, but not, right. you know. And all of those are things, right? Like right. I don't know the the woman experience. I don't know the trans experience. Like these right. are all things that we all go through. We only know our own lens generally, unless we are really close to someone in a different group. But that doesn't mean that those things aren't happening. And that's one of the things that I hear so much too. Like, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen that. Well, why would you see that? You know? Right, right. And so I think that's one of the things that this is good for too. It is a little bit of exposure where people might not normally see it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's part of the reason why we had, want to have this conversation. And it's not like, and I think sometimes uh, white people or whatever, I mean, some white people, um, would like to ask questions and would like yes. to understand more of different people's experiences, but you can't necessarily like just, Hey, tell me, tell me all the racist things that have happened to no, you today. Cool, I'll tell you. Yeah. Like, sit down. It'll be great. So but that's why I think it's really important though, to like tune in and have conversations yeah. and read. And, and when you do get close enough to someone, maybe have conversations yeah. um, that are harder than normal. Um, and those hard conversations are really important too, right? You have to have your safe friends that you could talk about with this stuff. I, we all we all know every therapist or psychologist could tell you like those difficult conversations are the things that help us grow, but they also help you grow closer with people. So if you've got people that you feel like you might be able to talk to about this stuff, do it. It will make you closer or you might make some enemies, but if so, uh, you probably wanted to know. Uh, you know, like, oh, you think what? Okay, maybe we need to take a little bit of a break. That's not so bad either. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, well, so where do we start? What do you want to? Uh, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Well, well, I know we had some questions. Yeah. Um, well, it, I one of the things I wanted to, except that June's not here. There's one thing I want to talk about, but I have to wait for June. So yes. maybe uh, Megan, who's running our live, could throw our first question at us. And again, like if you guys have questions, like that's why we're doing it live too, yes. is so you guys can throw out any question. No question is stupid. No question is bad or wrong. Like we, that's what we just want to talk about stuff. So, um, okay. So Megan, what do you got? So since we're talking about everyday racism, I thought we could first answer the question, what are microaggressions? So For what, those who don't know. Oh. So what are, yeah, so what is your definition, Gerard, of microaggressions? Oh, a little lesson. Uh, so for me in particular, right? And so I will start with a caveat. I'm not the spokesperson for all Black people. 70% of them, maybe. No. <laughs> Uh, right. All of these are my experiences. And much like we talk about being able to see through the lens of other people, exactly the same within any race, culture, group. Right. So I will talk a lot about my personal experiences and hopefully that will help know that there are other experiences out there and people who disagree, which is why we also want to do yes. this live. We want to hear we're fine with dissent. I want people to say, oh, that's not my experience and share it. And we will talk about it. Um, so for me, microaggressions are these things that are both good and bad, mm -hmm. uh, intent. 
uh, is what I mean by good and bad. The intent is both good and bad. So microaggressions are these little things that happen that are enough to put you out of your ease, right? Mm -hmm. So let's give an example, I think, that is for everyone. Many of us love our personal space, right? So let's say you're in a nice groove and you're working or playing a game or, I don't know, Sudoku, whatever the thing is that you're doing and everything is just peaceful. And then someone comes into your space, right? You don't hate that. You're not like, ah, I hate her. Right. You love her. But also, I was just at peace. And so it is just this thing that is a little disruptive. And those things, when they add up, turn into something that can be incredibly stressful, right? So sometimes this is an unintentional thing. They happen. And this would be when we talk about race, someone saying, um, we've talked about this in a previous episode, I love hair compliments. White people compliment my hair all day. People touch it. I don't mind. June will tell you exactly the opposite, right? Either way, this could be a microaggression and it is and is often a thing that de- is dependent on the people. So if as a black person, I walk into a space with my mayor or the governor or some big wig CEOs, or I am trying to represent my organization or a company or a group, and I am surrounded by very powerful, predominantly white people. And one of those powerful, predominantly white people says, oh yeah, and look, I love, I love your dreads. Like it's so urban, like that's, that's so cool. And I get that it's a compliment, but also I'm like, oh, I'm black. Like I'm like I'm getting this sort of reminder of that that part of it, and that people see me not as sort of an uh, another CEO, but as the black guy in the room. That doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but it is in fact what a microaggression is. So little things like that, people touching you weird or um, saying weird things like "hello" to everyone, and when they get to you, oh, a little fist bump. Oh my lord! Oh, and guess what? Pause on that. June has come in. Oh my god! I love your outfit. America, nice. Yes, yes come yes. on. So, uh, just whack it. Let's throw whack it. it. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Now, see, this is a this is a good thing to talk about. CP time. Oh, if you don't know what CP time is, you know what CP time is. Yes. CP time is when the black people are late. So you see, note that I wasn't late. Well, that's, it's important to see. So not all pe- black people are on CP time, but the weather was crazy out there. We Girl, had to drive get slow. Your breath. Just- no, I'm running up all them steps, Jesus. All right, so we good. We good. I got my- almost always early. Almost always, we're yeah. just sitting downstairs waiting. So, yeah. but the weather's a little tricky. But that's all right. Black people don't like rain either. We don't like getting our hair wet. Just kidding. No, I don't mind like getting my hair wet. wet. We talk about this hair thing. Mm. Cool. It's funny that I came right in when you were like, June will probably tell you different. She'll tell you different. Again, it's not about the um camera, because I feel like I need to get close. Yeah. I mean, it's real wide. It's real wide. Okay, it's real wide. Um, it's not about so much because see, I love Gerard's hair, first of all. My husband Damn also right has like yeah, exactly, because he's this glorious. Huh? And my husband also has locks. Notice I didn't say dread locks, because some people are like, oh, we don't really say dread anymore. So I just say natural locks. Wait, I'm sorry, is that a oh, thing? Exactly. See, he didn't even know that. So a lot of people don't like to say dread locks anymore because he's like dread, dreadful. So now it's locks, what? just natural locks. That's I the didn't new know thing. That. That's, well, maybe it's a New York thing and a California thing, but it'll what make do it. You just call them dreads. You just dreads. Yeah, just see, dread. that's all. Or I mean. even dreads. Oh, but you know, and and again, you see, that's another thing too. Some people don't like the word dread. Some people do. You know what I mean? There's so mm-hmm. many differences because we can't answer for the whole African diaspora. I told them we that. cannot. Yeah. I'm glad you did. Yeah. See, my brother. So you're like, pound. I heard about, I like, pound. pound. (laughs) What happens, though, maybe, is for some white people, there's so many, and maybe this is your experience with with other groups of people, too, but there's so many, we don't want to offend. Yes. Yes. Really don't want to offend. So then we don't say anything. Anything. Or we shy away from a conversation in, in case we say the wrong word. Right. As we say dreads and we're supposed to, you know. Exactly. And I think of that like, yeah. can I say Hispanic now? Do I say Latina? I'm so Latina. glad you brought that up. Don't. Because, you know, uh, my sweet, amazing mother-in-law still says Oriental. I'm like, 
I'm I'm saying saying Oriental. Wow. Oriental I just heard is someone a saying rug. it in a book, it's like an audio book. And I was like, it. when was this written? Asian. She's like, oh, oh, yes, yes. And she didn't mean it. She, of course, doesn't I'm mean sure. any any yeah. offense at all. But I was like, Oriental is a rug. I try, yeah. I'm just like, oh. You know what I mean? But again, because it changes so much, even with Negro, colored, black, African American, who can keep up? They'll all they'll all change. Look, and it's uh, here's change. the thing. I it's just me. I don't care what you say. If I can tell what your intent is, right? Mm -hmm. And this really matters. Yeah. If you if you say to me, and I've and I've heard it, this is a, a real story. Uh beautiful, very sweet, older lady, white. It's important for the story. Don't ever just tell the race when it doesn't matter for the story. Thank you. Right? Uh, yeah, oh, I was talking to my yes. friend. She's black. Uh, why? Why'd you tell me? Why'd you say she's black? Right. Because she'd love to act up. Uh, <laughs> no, because she was late. No, right? She was late. That's what you tell It's important. It's important. And let him finish. Wait, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Remember, so this, remember. Uh, so this wonderful uh, old lady, very sweet. She's awesome. And she's, she said to me, uh, she was giving away food and uh, she comes into the office. She's like putting stuff out. It's it's awesome. And she just has been doing this for years. Uh, <laughs> she said, oh, I really love your hair. My colored neighbor has this really good. And I was like, hmm. So now, now see, but you know what? I was like, oh. because as I was watching her talk, she didn't have any emotion. She wasn't like no oh, malice. That goddamn colored boy, and, and, that, and that was none of that. It was just mm -hmm. this. And I could have corrected her, and I thought about it. I thought about oh, we don't say colored. Oh, why? but if it's people old probably lady, do. Yeah. Like if there's a certain age, and they really, really don't have any malice. Yeah, at all, there was no anger. It was like, it's an Oriental stuff like. So I think there is a now. I'm not saying everyone should just be cool about it. Right. I am though, right? For me, the uh, uh, one of this, it's on the same vein, right? When I was in the military, our commander was security police in the Air Force. So now make your military jokes if you want to. Um, but in the Air Force, a security police and our commander said to us when we went to Desert Storm, I expect you to follow the letter of the law no matter what. So if you are driving and you can see for miles and miles and you get to a stop sign and there is no one there, you stop. And I thought, ugh. That's following the rules too goddamn close. Like that's it's a rule is there for a reason. Following it just blindly, I think, is just as bad, right? And so for me, intent really matters. And so if someone slips up or they say a thing weird or some guy comes over, he's like fist bound, bro. I'm not gonna be like, motherfucker, I can't believe you. And you, you probably shook everybody else's hand, right? right? But you shook everybody else's hand. Why did you do I might that talk for to him me? later, but you know what? I, I you're trying to you're trying to have some rapport, you're trying to bond, right? So I'm saying that if there is this feeling like, oh, this person is trying to make me less than. Now, no, I did say that's a microaggression, and it is. It is, yeah. And if someone is intentionally trying to make you feel lesser, now we really gotta talk. Right now, we really have to talk. Yeah. If it's something that you've done, and you might be someone I never talk to again, I'm not correcting you because what do I care? Right. If you do it, I'll be like, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> don't fist pound me in public, or what? Right? Like, like what? I, you know? And so, right. I, intent really matters. It really does. Now, say your story because you had to remember your story. Yes. Yes. Oh shoot. <laughs> Oh my God. Yep, it's never okay, coming. Never back. Back. It'll, yes. okay. I think that maybe sometimes, this is my, uh, that, I, that sometimes people put the race in, like I was talking to so and so, they're black, is to point out that they have other black friends. Like you're not their only one. No, but I feel like that people do that too. Yeah, yeah. that is very possible. Actually. You know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I've talked about it with authors. I have writer friends. Yep. Not racist, even kind of. Um, but I've talked to a lot of writers, actually. This guy called out once. No names, because I love him dearly. Right. He, if he's listening, you better be You better be listening, as I told you. Uh, he totally knows it, but uh, uh, corrected so fast. I love him. Uh, but I've talked to a lot of writers who, Joe walked in. Uh, Slim Blonde walked in. This guy came in. Johnny came in. He's black. And then I'm like, and you're just like, author, why you gotta, you know, the whole um, Hermione argument, yeah. 
right? That's one of them. Now, people will say, technically, in the books, they talk about her eyes, porcelain skin or something. I don't know. Black people can have porcelain skin. But I feel like if in a book they don't say that a character is black specifically, people assume that that character is white and will go up in arms about it. And so if you, as far as I know, haven't read all the books, I'm not 100% certain anyone in the books has ever said Jack Reacher, for example, is white. I don't think they said Jack Reacher, white man Mm -hmm. running around, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. people have read the books and be like, "Mm, it says in book four, but I don't know. But let's assume they don't. Why then if we made a Jack Reacher movie or TV show and he was right. black, people would be like, wokeness, why? Right. We we don't know. Right. Only because the author didn't say specifically. And so this calling it out is just sort of this is a microaggression. Yeah. Maybe it might it might even be a macroaggression, right? Yeah. It, I think what happens is the moment you call it out for one person, then we have to assume that you've called it out for everyone. And so if you Say, blah, blah, here's 47 people in the Game of Thrones. We're going to describe every one of them down to the nth detail. And then you mention one of those people is black. And we have to assume that you were calling out all of the black people. Mm. And then we can say, oh, no one else is. And so I think when and you- And only one black actor gets paid yeah, on that show. Right. Because right. Yeah, yeah. probably that, that one is black. I have a question though. Like, so I can't remember her name. It's a really interesting book. Um, I just made up an name. With a black female author, and she sort of did the opposite. Most of her characters were black, but uh-huh. when and didn't really. But when there was a white character, there were very few. But when there was a white character, really pointed that out. Toni Morrison. Yes. No, no, she's she's Terry McMillan. Oh, let's no, okay. and it's a sort of a thriller. It's oh, really okay. interesting. I'll figure out what okay, it okay. was. Uh-huh. But um, kind of did the opposite, which you know was whatever. Was it intentional? Was it like? see how it is or was it most of the you know I, if you're writing a, a story that takes place in 1963 harlem then maybe the like if the races matter mm-hmm. yeah. or if you're writing a book of uh well, the, the black to count, the main character you know what i mean so then yes legit and my friend who i was talking about writes books often that are in they set place in like the racist south sometimes and so sometimes the characters are racist and they should be and they should also say the things that the author would never say but because that fits in with the story that's mm. how it's supposed to right. be right. i don't read the book and get mad oh, i can't believe he said that he did it this character did right and and it fits and it makes sense right? right yeah but i think when you can hear that the author is saying it uh-huh. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, like with Lovecraft, if you know about the history yeah. of Lovecraft, <laughs> yes. he really was racist, okay, not was just so racist. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Not just the character was saying it. But like with Huckleberry Finn and Mark Twain, I don't know if Mark Twain necessarily was racist, even yeah. though he had a character called N-word Jim yes. was not the N-word. Nigger Jim. You know, yep. cut me out, sorry. But you know what I'm saying? Right. If that's a character, right. then you see what I'm saying? Yes. I don't think I don't put Mark Twain when I read and Lovecraft it, I in the same place. Oh, yeah. Mark Twain. I don't put Mark Twain and and, and no, oh, you know, in the same in the, and Lovecraft in the same thing. Um, another thing, I got to get back to hair for a second yeah. because when I would wear braids, or even I've heard someone ask this of my husband, your hair is so cool. How do you wash it? How do you wash it? Yes, you've never gotten that. I have not gotten that. Yes. How do you wash it? When if I have braids, and I've had braids for years, years, years. I mean, this is a week, but the times when I've actually had braids I connected to my hair extensions, how do you wash it? And I've heard someone ask my husband that. And he's like, with shampoo? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those kinds of things are kind of like, and again, it's the intent. Because the person yeah. just says, I'm just really curious. Is there something different that you do to wash it? That's a different question than, how do you wash right. it? Right, I think an intent. You see what I'm right. saying? Because I can it's like, see. How do you wash it? I'm That's black. The if you guys didn't notice, and before I had dreads, I might have also asked that question because you're interested in growing it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a different thing right. than someone who is not interested at all and says, 
mm, how do you wash it with that face and with that intent? With that That's face. the difference. Yeah. Like I don't hear and then just put it you on. Just them. put it on. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those are the kind of things. And it, it's intent. It's the way you ask. Yeah, there's an intent. There's it this really lesser. Is. It really is. Yeah. And the thing about the fist bump, and the thing about holidays. Um, there was a person who was like, Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, oh, Happy Hanukkah, like they do, or a Happy Kwanzaa. You know what I mean? They have to like learn how to no pronounce it even. Yet, but, you know uh, what I mean? Oh. But I have said it smart ass at least someone. But, and see, that's the thing. And if they're saying it genuinely, yeah. then I'm like, thank you so much. I do celebrate Kwanzaa. Yeah, also celebrate, celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa? and oh, I celebrate oh, Hanukkah. My great great grandfather oh. was Jewish. Oh my god! Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I celebrate Chris Kwanzaa. Hello. <laughs> hey, don't forget Festivus for the rest of us. Boom! Festivus for the rest of us. You're getting 27 Ramadan. gifts. That's a great. That's a great <laughs> season for you. Yeah. And the same thing with, and I, that's why I wore my red, white, and blue today because I want to talk about another microaggression. America, America. I want to talk about this idea that. Some, not all, but some people in this country have uh, about a person who is not Republican and who is, quote unquote, a liberal, not being patriotic. I am oh. very patriotic. Yeah. Huh. You understand what I'm saying? My mom, you, my mom bought me this jacket that I walked in here with. And we had matching jackets for July 4th and oh, for Memorial Day. I'm telling you, my mom was so into it. She worked for the U.S. Postal Service. And she was like, oh, maybe I should show them my badge. Mom, they don't need to see your badge. You know what I'm saying? But she was very, very patriotic. I do my want to see that badge. Picture, well, there you go. Uh, there you go. I'm mm-hmm. going to try and find them. I'm going to text it to you. I'll take a picture nice. of it. Yes. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my father served in the Army. My grandfather serves in the army how dare you yeah just because i'm afrocentric think that i'm not patriotic mm. i love these colors i'm the first one to be singing god bless america and all the patriotic songs and guess what i am going to be having my hot dog for july 4th but i also had a hot dog for juneteenth eh. oh, look at you. you do double it up hey man double you know it it's up. not mutually exclusive right yeah that's the point I'm making. Yeah. So that's a little weird microaggression that people assume just because I'm into Juneteenth that I'm not going to celebrate July 4th. Yeah. And miss out on all those hot dogs? What are you talking about? I mean, less fireworks at the ballpark? Mm. Yeah. Fireworks. Durham so, ballpark, people. And this whole thing about, I was just seeing this um, Marjorie, what's her name? Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Green. Marjorie Taylor Green. And she was like, yes, I'm a Christian nationalist and all this kind of stuff because our forefathers were and our founding fathers. Let me tell you something. Those founding fathers were also slave owners. So you got to come around and say, okay, yes, I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to be this, that, and the third. But I'm also proud of the fact that people who look like me helped to build this country that you love so much and that I also love so much. Also, for the record, they wouldn't have been all that keen on her either. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, fathers, if you guys are listening, (laughs) we do not like you. Thank you. (laughs) So you you, you got to be able to to yeah. say yes. Yeah. I don't have to be just one thing. Yeah. Well, that's what America is about. Right. Right. It's our whole thing, really. Yes. Yes. It really is. Whole thing. Yeah. It's whole thing. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm so glad you're here, June, because June said yes. this to me, and I've been wanting to talk about this too because oh. I think it's interesting. Um, so June said to me earlier, but the the really funny clip from J- Jimmy Fallon, yes, about like asking white people, like, do you do you have a black friend? Yes, or, or you know, and then some of them are yes. like, maybe. I'm like, one. I love the maybe. She was like, maybe I do. Do I? I, um, I love that. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and then, you know, asking black people, and they're like, yeah, I have a lot of white friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so my question, though, is well, let me back up. It's a because, question to us? Yes. It's awkward. You know, no, we have white no, friends. No, but you're our friend. You're yeah. our one white friend. Uh, <laughs> you're, in, you're, yeah. in. you're in the club. That's why we're here. You, you, you can say the word. <laughs> Don't say the word. But the God, no. No, you no. can't say the word now. You ain't saying the word now. But our 10th caller can say the word. I don't want to say the word. I don't know why. why? Okay. But I do have this question when I think about it. Um, Because I think that's an, a fabulous thing. And I think it's really funny. But then when we go out a little bit further, like, I was thinking about it. Like, do you have an Asian friend? I do. How many? Several. 
Yeah. See, and this is the cool have. thing. I got a lot. I, I got to cool count thing. them out. Uh, my well, phone. I mean, I'm already over seven. This is, this, is, this is my phone because I actually had to send it, not this particular phone, but years ago when it was just like a flip phone or whatever, yeah. I had to go to a place that the guy had to, you know, fix my phone. Right. And he was like, oh, I see you have a lot of Asian friends. He was an Indian guy. Okay. But he was looking, I'm like, so why are you looking at my Jacqueline? Well, he's all up in there. He was, just, he was looking at yeah. Chen. He was looking like Chen. He was looking at, you know, um, um, Singh. He was, was he looking at your the pictures? Because you need to put doing, a stop to that. But it was so interesting to me that he was so surprised they, that I had all, and I have Latino names in this, my yeah, thing. So and I have all kinds just, of yeah, names. Like, right. Yeah. Native, like, we don't right. ask as much the, like, uh, Indian, right, um, or Native American, right, or you know, other or Latino or right. Latina or right. whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's that is an interesting question, also. I mean, Very it's not much, really, so. you know, exactly yeah. what we're talking about. But how many gay friends do you have? Yeah, I have a lot of gay friends. Yeah. Baby, yeah. They, yeah. they think I'm a diva, and yeah, I we're in theater, but, so. so they love me. Yeah. No, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, I have a lot of gay gay male friends yeah. specifically. I have some female. Um, bisexual friends not necessarily necessarily just straight but i have yep. you yeah. know what i mean yeah. i do have definitely a lot yeah. of but i'm i lived in i'm from new york and i lived yeah, in la exactly. so if i lived in idaho i grew up here and i still do like well, it's cool. right yeah you know, but you're an artist it, right, these guys exactly. are artists first of all check out their art they're not going to pump their own oh, um uh, they're not going to but both of them check out their first art off, they're you amazing put our art together no i'm just kidding they, no, 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 it's great saying, check them no, like no. really google their names and look at their art they're amazing i i do um stick figures i can't do what they do but i'm just saying you know what i mean He's a fine artist. I'm a fun artist. Yes, there. Where are you? Like naked people. Well, there you go. Look at my, look at my art. <laughs> you paint what you love. Is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. But because yeah. we're artists, that's maybe why we have a little bit more of a, a of a you know a rounded, well rounded friendship circle. Than... Well, it's because we're artists. But let's be honest. It's because we like to talk, and so like, I think we're not. You know. A, if you have only two friends, they may be people who think very much like you and look very much like you. Right. And so yes. when you talk to an introvert and say, do you have any black friends or white friends? Right. Or Latinx and that's friends kind of not fair because they don't have a whole right. lot of yeah. friends. They got period. two friends that you can think right. about. True. And so it's, it's not quite True. a fair question. It really isn't. If you've got 20 friends, you're like, oh, I'm having a party. And I go to your party and it's all the same race. You're part of the problem. I said it. You're part of the problem, but right? Problem is a funny word because like you just said, if that person only grew up in a town where it was just True. white people. That was me. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you had no the party of 20 people, then of yes. course her 20 people anymore. would be just white people. Anymore. And the yeah. same thing with black people. I have black friends who don't have any white friends. They have white associates, they have white co-workers, and they're quick to make that di- you know that, mm-hmm. that difference and, and let you mm-hmm. know. But right. friends... No, no, not friends. Maybe that's what that one person was like. I don't know if they're my friends. Right. Associates, I mean, we work co-workers, together. schoolmates, blah, 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 yeah. but not friends. And that's okay to a certain extent. But if you're racist, it's not okay because then you didn't give then you're not giving them a chance. A chance. That's yes. the word. You're not giving other races a chance if you're a racist. Now, if you're not a racist and you just happen to grow up in Idaho or you know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a whole lot of black people in Nebraska. There's not a whole lot of black people. Well, now there is. You know why there is? A friend of mine, she told me this. She got a free college education for going to Nebraska because they needed more black people in Nebraska. This was years ago. But she got a completely Kudos, Nebraska. Free. Yeah. Now, this is years ago. I don't know if they're still doing that now. But still, but, that's awesome. But And, of course, she was the only black person in her class. But she had a free ride. Now, now the bad sure thing we're gonna is... We're going to get a bunch of questions. We're like, going to get oh, that. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. She got a free ride. Because they needed black people to get whatever funding. This is just this is just money. It's all about money. Follow the money. It also happens in other places. Look, yeah. uh, I love North Carolina Central University. And that's where I went. And I can't tell you how many of my white friends also went to North Carolina Central University. For that uh, white people scholarship, I don't know. That's not what it's called. I know, but it cannot be called that. The white people scholarship. <laughs> Please come in. Uh, uh, but it's but it's true, right? It is yeah. it is bringing folks in. It is helping yeah. with diversity, and th- yeah, yeah. those things are great. And yeah. I think it is the 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 leg up, right? We 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 talked we've talked ad nauseum probably about reparations and things like that, right? Yeah. But I think this is one of those instances where giving people of all sorts a chance and 
when you when you historically haven't given a group of people a chance, letting them try. It is no different than, I don't know, you dating the same kind of person your whole life and then saying, you know what? Those relationships might not have worked out great. I'm going to date someone who's a little more type A. Yeah. And you just give it a try. Yeah. And yeah. maybe this is the person you marry. Yeah. Maybe it's not, right? right? Just because you go on a date with them doesn't mean that they automatically get to become spouse. Right. When you have things like uh, letting different races in or or clubs that are historically male and then you mm -hmm. bring females in, mm -hmm. this isn't saying suddenly, ah, well, we're just throwing everything out now. What you're saying is, oh, let's give them a shot. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't work, they it doesn't work. But if it works, if you are a predominantly white school, a uh, medical school, we just talked about this, yeah. right? Uh, someone, oh, Lord. <laughs> someone was saying like, oh, I just don't think it's fair that, uh, you know, I, I can't go to a, a doctor who might have gotten in because of the color of their skin. So they're basically saying they don't. Uh, so I, so I don't I don't trust black doctors because they <laughs> might have gotten into medical school because, because they're of black. affirmative action. But you know what? They didn't graduate because they're black. They still have to you do still, the same do stuff. The, you still have listen. Let them in. Let, the them, let, people, let everyone in. Let the, everyone in the medical only school. They will all in, wash it. on Earth that can just go to school, not do the work, and still pass are basketball players. I'm sorry, they are the only ones. Everybody else has to do the work. And football players. And football players. players. Whomever yeah. it is that they want to make great. sure that there's a team, that we have a good team, they're the only ones. Everybody else has to do the Steph Curry, the if you're work. watching this. Uh, now, now granted, there's some really smart basketball yes, and football absolutely. players out there. But I'm, I'm not saying, but you know some of your friends. We've talked about this. You know this, some of uh, on your uh, team yeah. just skated by and they did not do the work. You and know that. Almost uh, so many colleges have had scandals about this where Come they're on. like, oh, we no, know the entire team right. uh, was taking three crypt classes and yeah. just, but. Okay, yeah. but let me wrap it back to you. Yes, come back. Because I think back. I think people don't think enough about when. So even if you grow up in a town of predominantly white people, mm -hmm. um, and you're white, like seeking out or being in a place like specifically seeking out people of different races and different cultures and different for me even different religions. Like your your world widens with yes. information and finding out new experiences. Like you become a better more educated, more interesting human being. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. like someone asked me <clears throat> to join a book club, which I thought was great. Then I was like, are there other people than other there? Are there anyone other than white women? And she was like, what? <laughs> maybe there's an Indian woman. I was like, no, <laughs> no. But I was like, no, there has to be more diversity. Yeah. Not that I have a, if you don't have nappy hair, then you don't, get <laughs> don't count. I wanted yeah. Interesting yeah, yeah. conversations. And not that obviously. Yeah, like, we don't want to talk about this book from the same race, did. class, sex. Like, if all of us are the same, we're all going to talk about the same okay. chapter. Oh, you know, this chapter it really bothered me. We all go, yep, yep, yeah. yep. And then that'll be where the conversation yeah. ends. And it would, it's just fascinating to find out. Like, I experienced this by reading it, and then you experienced something completely different. And I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. This, uh, this sort of comes to where the, I think. Less race, more the human, the human race. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that comfort is a really big thing for a lot of people, yeah. right? A lot of people, and it's not necessarily bad. It's not me. Uh, you know, you've got a growth mentality. I'm constantly trying to, you know, as you said, yeah. you're trying to get yeah. better and be more rounded. Not everybody, and I'm starting to find a lot of people prefer comfort, and that's not bad. It's not an us or them sort of thing. But I think your comfort people are not trying to get into yeah. if I'm if I only have black friends and I'm a comfort person and then I could go befriend a white person that I I don't know anything about them, I'm not going to. Yeah. Right. And so now does that do they get a pass? I don't know. But I think a lot of this comes down to comfort as well. Yeah. We, probably all of us, and maybe a lot of the people listening, you know, you kind of uh, same, you know, we're talking to a lot of our audience, but I think we want to find out more about other people and other cultures are fascinating to right. us. And when we hear a difference of opinion or when we talk about things that we disagree on, those things don't automatically become fights. Yeah. We like an, an argument, a good Stephen Colbert ish <laughs> argument. <laughs> 
those those things okay. really jazz us up, right? And so I think comfort people or insecure folks even, or uh, folks who are dead certain on their opinion, right? There's a lot of both negative, uh, positive and negative and neutral. But I think when you're in that place, when you hear a difference of opinion, it's it can be an attack. Mm-hmm. This isn't for them. They've already checked out. <laughs> If you're a person, you're like, oh, God, I hate when people talk different stuff. You're probably not listening anymore already, right? Yeah. Um, and, and you're not really going to reach them. But I think that is a lot of it. Yeah, I think, I mean, to be honest, like sometimes I put myself in situations where there is a little uncomfort, be- I mean, a little uncomfortability because am I being judged? Am I? But But I'd rather be in that space and learn and experience um, from other people and and because you said this one time too it's just like it's okay to be uncomfortable yeah because that's how you learn yeah, it is. and um and that you know and that's something i've learned from like being an artist in different ways but i i try and but it's not easy like that's yeah it's not easy to sometimes just sit and be a little bit uncomfortable yeah absolutely but, have you yeah. read that book white fragility i have it and I've, i'm halfway through okay. yes yeah um i read it i need to reread it but it was interesting, some of the things you're saying as far, as far as people not being comfortable. And there's a new movie coming out, something about um, the magical Negro, the adventures of the... Ma- oh, something. the author. The, um, the yeah. guy, he, David, I mean, I know David Allen Greer's in it, whom I love, so I'm definitely going to see it just for him. But... Jeffrey... I don't know who else is in it, but I know for sure that yeah, yeah. the reason I'm saying these things is okay. because there is this thing of, we're we have been taught that's kind of like the premise of the movie you cannot make white people uncomfortable it's worth your life you know what i mean and years ago it really was but even today it kind of is yeah. um going back to microaggressions and going back to my little flag that i have here there's a next door neighbor now i live in a home that i don't own i live with a family member so i don't make the decisions about anything really uh, there is a next door neighbor who has a big flowing flag from his, you know, flagpole high. You can see it all over. Years ago, when 45 was running, he had the Trump flag right next to his flag. Mm. Now, he put it up, but then he came to my family member that owns the house and says, I just want you to know, you know, it doesn't mean anything. I'm just letting you know I am putting this flag up there, but we're still friends. We're still cool, whatever. So my first question after he left was, did he go to all the white people in the neighborhood and say that to them? Clearly, he knows that man is not for the brothers because that's why he came to try to say, I just want you to know we're cool. Nothing has changed, whatever, but I am putting that flag up there. This really happened. That's a microaggression. Oh, wow. I would say that's a macroaggression macro yeah, yeah. to come and say, I just it's want like, you hey, to know. You know what? I like you. We're still friends. But I also like I the got, racist. But for Halloween, I'm going as a Klansman. Thank you. But just for Halloween. Just Halloween now. Speaking of going as a Klansman, oh, Lord, come did you on. know you know that story about Kirstie Alley, right? The actress Kirstie Alley, she's don't dead. Don't talk shit about Kirstie Alley. I know she's dead, but I'm still going to talk shit about her. Uh, because... She was my first crush. Oh, I'm so sorry to tell you. Josh, and I'm sure Josh worked with her. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm going to have to okay. send you guys the link. Okay. She went on Barbara Walters. I have this link, and I will send it to you, talking about... This is a bad story, but her parents were in a terrible car accident. So she was in California, of course, and she had to fly to wherever they were. And they're all sitting in the uh, waiting room waiting to hear. Their mother died. But the father was still in emergency room. So she said, well, what was happening? They were going to a Halloween party. Well, what were they dressed as? This is what Kirstie is asking her sister's. They're all waiting the thing. Mom is dead. Kirstie Alley, Alley's parents went as the mother went as a black woman in blackface, and the father went as a Klansman. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this up. I will send you the link. Obviously, Kirstie Alley and Barbara Walters are dead, so it was a long time ago. I will send you the link. I just saw that last week. I posted it on my Facebook page. It's her... She laughed and said, oh, that's mom. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's funny as shit. That's funny to me. No. Look, if that happened... It's funny to you. Why is that funny? Uh, it's absurd. It's, it's absurd. absurd, yes. Um. Uh, yeah. But it's... that you would tell Barbara Walters that. We got to tell that story. You can't keep that story in your head. And to laugh about it like... <laughs> oh, a oh, oh, little blackface. Uh, what year was Their this? mother... I can't know that. I know that Barbara and Kirstie are both dead, so clearly it was a long time ago. So, but, but what I'm I guess my is, my question is for Kirstie. Oh, look, what I'm year trying to is it ever Kirstie okay? Alec. What year is it ever okay for blackface? For, for blackface I mean, I like and for clans. <laughs> Unless, I mean, look, even even when Al Jolson did it, it wasn't cool. I'm gonna say this. So you it told was, me your great grandfather was in blackface. They'd be like, "Oh man, that was a long time." Was he Al Jolson? He, well, he better have been able to tap. Does everybody know who Al Jolson is? Please check um, Google Al Jolson. There's no, no way either. these people don't know who Al Jolson is. Not does. everybody does. No, she is. doesn't know who he is. She's Canadian. Thank you. I it doesn't think. matter. Okay, tell me. Tell me. Wow. How I love you. How I love you. That mammy thing. The whole back in the day. It was the first. It's the first talky movie. Okay. Yeah. It's before you know. Because before it was black. It was black and white. Yeah. But it was the first talky movie, and it was a white man, Al Jolson. Do you know that I thought he was black for a very long time? Of course you did, because yeah. it was a very it was good really blackface. Good blackface. Oh. And black he's guy. like, "How I love you, how I love you, mammy. mammy." You know, and and Great. and Bugs Bunny. They made fun of it on Bugs Bunny, oh, yeah. even. Oh my lord! It was the first talky. Wow. Black people in the first talky, but not really. black people representing. Because it wasn't a black person. It nope. was Al Jolson in blackface. Al Jolson. They did this with pork. Indians. They did this with uh, Asian. It was just, yeah. It was a lot of... What, Even Mickey black Rooney? people, <laughs> light-skinned black people had to do blackface. Burt Williams, he was too light-skinned. But they wanted someone who looked darker. Oh, so I haven't he heard had, this. Burt Williams. Oh, wow. Google it. Educate. Google it. He was light-skinned and he had to Google do it. blackface. Wow. Google it and comment, and then ask a question about yeah. it. Hey, are there any questions? And yeah. if there's not, maybe don't tell me because I'm not listening. <laughs> yeah, if there are questions, like start shooting out your questions now, though. Um, yeah, and it's sure. terrifying. Good, someone just looked it up. Thank you. <laughs> terrifying. Nice. How I love you. Let us know when there are questions because we can always pause for questions or okay. comments or anyone comments saying how lovely my hair is. Yeah, your hair yeah. is lovely. Thank you. So. It really has a nice sheen. Wow. I washed it the other day regularly, like a lot of people do. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. How do you wash it? But, you know, no, that's a terrible question, but... No, I really want it. But I have learned a lot about black hair. Having a black son yes. is so different, it is different. than my it's hair. It's different texture. I'm so glad you said that. Some white people think, oh, we're all the same. No, we're not. Yeah. Just look at our hair texture, and you yeah. will know we are not all the same. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Don't yeah. look at Halle Berry's hair texture. So, well, because she's mixed. That's the same. Yeah. She's mixed. She had a white mama. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like we're all different. Thank we're all, you. Even though, like, white people don't all have the same hair. Like, I can wash my hair literally every day or get super oily. There you go. My mom washes it like twice a week. There like, you go. So even different. white people have different textures. We are all different. Yeah. We're all different. We're all different. And mm. yet the same. And yet the same. We we'll all smell when we run. Oh, yeah. And Josh will tell you differently. He does not smell. What? I don't know. He smells like honey. Does he? Do you believe He him? smells like honey. <laughs> oh, I hate him so much. Love, love is blind and love oh, cannot boy. smell. No, I can smell. I can smell other people. But... I, just, I just said run and I'm already like, oh. It's like honey. Wow. Hey, Josh. Hey, Joshy. Mwah. Hate you. I'm sorry to talk about your Kirstie Alley friend. I'm very sorry. No, but I'm gonna send you the link too. I'm gonna send you the link too. I'm I'm still not I'm not I don't mind. I'm about to send you the link. Oh my god. I think she's lovely. She's beautiful. She was. She was. She was was all those things. She She also supported Trump. And then she tried to unsupport him. And then she tried to unsupport him. She tro- she, she did support him. Yes, she did. Wow. Wow. Hmm. And then happened? she tried to um, backpedal. Y'all didn't know about that either? Kirstie Allen. See? Y'all are just in a cloud. You're on the Kirstie cloud. Y'all just... No, I just... I bet even dead she smells like honey. She probably smells like honey. Yeah. I bet she does. All right, Megan. Give us another question or uh, a comment or anything like that. What do we got? Oh, uh, we do have a comment. Someone would like to know about racism in mental health care. Ooh, oh, that's a good one. Because oh, wow. I nice. know about sexism, mm-hmm. but I don't know anything about racism. So, Well, my story, and I'm going to try to make it brief. I worked in a senior assisted living facility in Los Angeles for a short time. There was an old white man 
who every time he saw me, now he saw me without the wig. So I had my real African, Afrocentric, Afro hair when he would see me. And he was like, you nigger. I'm sorry. I got to use the word because he didn't say N word. And he, he was worked like, there or was he a he patient He was a there? patient there. Oh, okay. So mentally ill. That's the mentally sure, ill yeah, part yeah. of it. And he was like, nah. And he would always like, they would roll him by. And he was like, don't listen to her. She doesn't know anything. Nah. And so he was just like this vitriol. But of course he was mentally ill. So I didn't pay him no mind. And you old and you raggedy. I don't care about you. Now. <laughs> And for Halloween, we're gonna have old guilt later. Uh, we're gonna have old guilt. Yeah. So for Halloween, I dressed up. Uh, um, uh, it was so cool because the guy who was our supervisor, his name was At- Adam. <laughs> Adam. His name was Adam. And all of us in his team, we came, we went ask Adam's family. So I was dressed up like Morticia Aww. and I had this gorgeous black thing and I had the long black wig and the whole whatever. And all of a sudden he loved me. The same guy that used to wheel past every day because he didn't realize I was the same person. Oh and he was God. like, hello, sweetheart. How are you? I'm like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the same person who used to call me the N-word every day and call me a black bitch and all this kind of stuff every day. When he saw me in my costume, was it the dress or the hair? It was probably both, because you know the body was like pow pow pow. So you know <laughs> the dress, but it was the hair because he did not know I was the same person. But he wow. still knew you were black. He knew I was black, but all of a sudden he, did, I think it was nappy hair. He didn't like maybe. You know what I mean? The, the nappy little afro. He didn't like. If there like. are any racists listening, is it the hair? For, for a lot of I people, I think it's the hair. Because if you think about it, those same people mm-hmm. who are so racist or whatever, but yet they'll have a black girlfriend that's like all, you know, who has like the black Barbie doll hair, and they'll be okay with it. But they don't like the rest of those jigaboo, nappy head people. You know what I mean? Like, huh. it really is. Some, some people, maybe it is no, the hair. No, this might be a real thing. I'm, it's a real I'm thing. I don't think it's just the this. skin color. I think it is the hair. Wow. Hmm. I think it's the hair. It has to be the hair. Because if, if they had to do the Crown Act, they had to pass a law to make sure that people could even work in corporate America with their nappy hair. Yeah. So it yeah. is the hair. It's yeah. not just the skin. Yeah. Yeah. Mental health, I think, if, when we're talking about the practitioners of mental health, I think it's probably similar to regular health. So there's a, there, there's a ton of studies, right? We may have even talked about them uh, at, during one of our, our sessions here. Um, educated women or educated white people, great health care, right? Same doctor, same system. Uneducated white people, meh, health care. Educated black people, same meh, health care. Uneducated black people, just right. And so some of this is the, not from me, but some of the things that the couple studies that I've read on this say one, black people aren't trusted. So not all doctors, right? So if you go in as a well off white person and say, oh, I got to, it hurts. I know you thought it was fine, but it's still hurting me. The doctor is more likely to take that seriously mm-hmm. and do more tests. Mm-hmm. This is prominently for white men, mm-hmm. white women, a little less so. Mm-hmm. Oh, it still hurts. Ah, go home. But if it's still bothering you, darling, then mm-hmm. give me a call in a couple days and then we'll bring you in for some tests. Educated black man, oh, God, it still hurts. They're less likely to be listened to. Ah, it's nothing. I've done my job very well, thank you. And so it is. it tends to be dismissed. And so Black people have a lot more undiagnosed things. It is when we talk about Black women um, and, and child care and giving birth and- um, And the morbidity. Yes. And so this is- It's high. Uh, and there's a great story, uh, tennis one. Just had a baby. Vanessa Williams or, or not Vanessa Williams, Venus Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it was Venus who was saying that even her wealthy, well known, had a lot of trouble. It was Serena. Serena. Oh, it was actually you. Serena. Um, who who was like the biggest, right? one of the biggest athletes yeah. in the world. Still had trouble because yes, her doctors did. wouldn't listen to her when she said, Oh yes. no, I'm feeling this thing. And yes. they were just dismissed yes. and not want to do tests and things. Whereas in a lot of instances, if she had been white and said, oh, these things are going on, they would have gotten more yes. tests and things like that. I can only imagine this is the same 
when you talk about mental health. Yeah. And so when I think when you, I mean, how could it not? And so yeah. if you have a well-off white person, particularly whose parents are well-off, and they say, oh, this person is having whatever, hallucinations, things going crazy. They're a little more likely to get help when you see black people. In fact, I will talk about our town specifically. We have, we have a lot of homeless for sure. I see regularly working downtown, like we all know the seven or eight homeless people that we see all downtown. Some of them obviously with mental health things. And the people that have major mental health things of the, the seven or eight of them, six or seven of them, only one of them is white. And it is a woman and she is older. And the others are black men, mm-hmm. one black woman, who have obvious things. Now, this is just a fluke, right? So we often talk about this, oh, you know, black people this, black people that. They, they can be lesser. And I can hear why a lot of white people might think that. But it is also because they haven't gotten help that white people might normally be able to get. Mm -hmm. Again, not in all instances, but in so many of them. Mm -hmm. And so it is just this thing that manages to keep people down. There is also, to the other side of it, there was a doctor who uh, talked about this very thing who wrote, I will try to find it, but he wrote this, I think she actually, she wrote this amazing article that said, yes, I've heard that study, and we started paying attention to it in our clinic, and then over like a year, the rates of like her African-American patients went up because they made an effort to, right? right? And again, it's back to semi-reparations, right? We, they probably didn't really do anything super special for Black people. They just thought about it more and put them in and gave some consideration, but it worked. The, on the other side, there was a black police officer who racist hmm. only, he never did traffic stops. Like, so one of the things we talk about a lot is that uh, black people get stopped for by police a lot. And, and so everyone thinks, Oh, black people more likely have a car or a gun in their car or drugs in their car or open alcohol containers. Hmm. But the truth is, it's just they get stopped more and caught more. Mm -hmm. So this black police officer, over the course of a couple of years, never did a random traffic stop for a black person, only white people. Racist. It's a racist thing. I'm not condoning that. What I am showing is that he had the exact same numbers, uh, in some instances more, of drug use, Mm -hmm. weapons in cars, Mm -hmm. parole violations, Mm -hmm. cars not being registered, Mm -hmm. this exact same number without having any black people on Mm -hmm. on the list, right? And so- Did you get in trouble for that? uh, I don't know. I'm assuming because he, I I don't even know if he's the one that wrote the article, but the the article was about him, said his name, had a picture of him and everything sort of. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if he got in trouble or not. Um, But Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was, it's fascinating, right? So- it's just this thing of, yeah, again, everybody's the same if you give everyone the same shot. And I think that does not happen in, in, in mental health for sure, or a, medic, a medical uh, for sure, but I'm assuming the same is for mental health. And there's probably a ton of stories of people who can say, you know, I took a kid in, this didn't happen. I didn't get this evaluation. You know, I've heard ADHD is not diagnosed in... Uh, black kids as often. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if it's true. I don't have any kids of my own, but these are things that I've heard and studies that I've read, and they they make sense. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. All right, that was a good uh, good. That was a good question, and I always wondered too, like because I hear just even like black women, there's a lot more deaths when they're like when they're uh, in labor or yes. whatever, like by a lot. Yes, actually. it's oh, not yeah. like it's not like it's up two percent. I I don't remember the numbers, so but it's an insane amount. When they're not getting the same kind of care when they're birthing their, they're babies. just not believed. Just like Serena, um, you know, Serena, who's like the number one oh, no. <laughs> as far as money, as far as athlete, as yeah. far as fame, as far as yeah. everything. For her to come out, that's why I'm so glad she did because yeah. she sh- um shed a light on this thing. They're not believed. I know I've been to the doctor and, the, and I had a problem. It was a workman's comp issue and I messed up my knees. I think I said this last time. I'm sorry if I'm repeating it. But the doctor was like, oh, um, that's all right. Because, you know, for football players, we just fix them up and get back on that field. I said, first of all, 
I'm not a football player. I'm not getting on anybody's field. And we're talking about my knee. And it was right around the time with the whole, you know, um, the guy who bent down on his knee. What's his name? Oh, uh, uh, the football player. Copernic, yeah. yeah, college. Yeah, yeah. So, Chapernickel. Yeah. So, so please don't talk to me about my knee and a field and football players right now. You know what I mean? And so that's when I went ahead and got a lawyer. And I'm glad I did. Had he not said that, I probably mm. wouldn't have got a lawyer. I would have just done whatever they told me and gone back to, you know, right. told them I can't go back to full duty. I have to stay on. Um, what they call ease duty or something. I don't know what it was because I told him I'm still in pain. Yeah. And he was like, ah, you're fine. You'll be okay. A white male doctor. Sorry, he just was. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, oh, you'll be okay. It's almost as if they don't. And again, I think this all goes, I think everything yeah. goes back to slavery. They don't think of us as human beings. They still think of us, women, black women, as animals. They thought of Serena Williams as an animal. They I did wonder. not see her as a woman. I'll give they some defense to see, this. But they only... did not see her. They, they, right. they see us as if we're stronger somehow. Even when they look at our little boys, they try to charge them as adults instead of charging them as juveniles because they think of them as men, even though they're only 13 or 14. Look at the, the Central Park Five. They tried these kids as if they were like men. Some of them were like 13. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? They look at us as if we are not human. Well, I don't, I wouldn't say that they necessarily think of us as animals, but I do hear that part about them. Uh, there is some fear. I read an, an interesting thing where a uh, quote said, do you know why white people are afraid of black people? Why? Because they know that if they were in the same situation, they would in fact revolt. They would retaliate. Thank right? you. And so there it's is this only sort by of the like, grace of God. Right. And right. that's why they taught us to be so religious. Huh? They knew what they were doing. <laughs> that's why they put Bibles in our hands and taught us all them damn Bible verses. Because they knew what they were doing. Any book, and this, oh, I'm going to get in trouble with a lot of religious people right now. Any uh -oh, book that says slaves obey your masters, oh, who does that benefit? The yeah. slave or the master? Yeah, that's all I, I was saying. Say. We yeah. could enslave the Canadians, and then that would be they're not going to fight back either. That's pretty, yeah. pretty good. That's Justin Trudeau. Yeah, yeah, have him doing dishes. I hear you. Yeah, that's at the end of the Old Testament, right? Yes, it is. And then also about obeying, like it's put like women. wives, wives submit yourselves yeah. to your husband. Who does that benefit? The wife or the husband? Hello, man-made. It's all man-made, folks. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh no, it's written by God. No, it's written by men. Yes. Oh please, yes, of course. Oh, no, God, oh and guess who's uh, selling a Bible now for sixty dollars? Yes, our buddy is selling. But at least he has the Bible turned the right side up this time. He didn't have it upside down like he did last time. Yes, he's selling Bibles now. Is it signed by him? Because yeah, that would be probably, the best, yeah. probably, probably. It's it's the only Bible approved by Trump. Or and with his little, wow. his little orange, his orange smudge lip print is on it. It's like a big orange smudge. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, though. I want a Trump signed Bible for no other reason because that's funny. Uh, Same. I'm uh, not good for race relations because I think too many racist things are funny. Is, yeah. It is funny. No, do no, you, some of it is funny. Do you real. think you think it's funny that, like, is there a part of you that goes to the funny because you feel less hurt by it? Oh, yeah. Uh, humor is my self defense mechanism. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, Langston Hughes wrote about it, laughing to keep from crying. La Langston Hughes, you know, yeah. said it best. And I'm probably not going to cry, but I'm worried about yeah. punching somebody in the face. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know. Then you'll be crying because you'll be in jail. A little, you know? little exactly. giggle here and there uh, exactly. probably saves a lot of lives. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, okay, well, that's a good question. Sweet. Right. Uh, Megan, what else you got? Uh, well, since we're talking about being funny, we could do... Um... Bill Cosby. Oh! Yes. Yes. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. yes. And please, you know, okay, so, which, you know, I used to love Bill Cosby, and now I hate did. We all I, did. We, we all did. did. And now we so did. I'm part of this amazing group. It's amazing. It's Homeschool of Color. Mm hmm mostly black families but mm -hmm. mixed race different mm -hmm. different different kinds of families it's amazing when we have this group chat and everything and there was i don't know if it was about black history or something else but someone shared an old thing from bill cosby a clip like a video like clip? a clip or something or a sound bite oh and what was it about Bang. what was it because I didn't click on it because I hate Bill Cosby. Well, you got to click on it. You got to click on it. What? What? What's that to me? 
click on it. I'll okay. tell you what it is. But but because I the thing is, I'm not afraid to watch the old. This is what I hate about Bill Cosby. Yeah, Tempest Bledsoe did not deserve to lose her residuals over this. Does everybody understand what I'm saying by that? No. So no. They stopped the show. She used to live on the residuals from the Cosby show. She didn't deserve to lose right. her residuals. Right. right. She, uh, Jeffrey Owens didn't deserve to be working at Trader Joe's because he has no residuals anymore. From well, he you could remember have the lived. obscure one. Baby, I'm was. telling you. Yeah. He, he lived. You could live off those residuals. Yeah. And once the show got taken off, now these people have to go out and find something else. That's not fair. It is a it is a hard place. We've we've talked about this with, and I've talked about it with actually a lot of friends lately, right? Um, you know, if you know someone that has done this heinous thing, yes, and you say, "Oh, I can never support that person," right? Right. Then maybe any uh, from that point forward. So if Bill Cosby were to have a new show we could hate him and everybody that would be on it if someone's like oh yeah i'll be on the new bill cosby show oh yeah that person can be hated too boo but that's absolutely right there were a lot of people who didn't know who weren't in this place right kids tempest bledsoe was vanessa she was a child on that show so how much of it do we do we boycott and does that person get? They don't deserve. They ruin everyone else. But my question was, it was very specific. It had nothing to do with the show. It had to do with something Bill Cosby said and promoting that. Mm-hmm. But because I'm white and mostly the group isn't, I felt like I couldn't speak up. And maybe it didn't matter, but I couldn't speak up and say like, "What? How could you share? Can we? Can you we not could share not for the. I mean, no, no, this isn't a race thing. This was a woman thing. I think as a woman, you could absolutely. Well, look, as anybody, I could have done it, right? But I think you absolutely have the right to go, um, Bill Cosby, seriously? Like, that could have. But I would say, if I were the person who's imp- with this group that you have, yeah. and you said it's mostly black people and so forth, I would at least look at it first before I say okay. it. Yeah. Because, you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. it could have been something, you have no idea what it was. Yeah. Because he used to say stuff that kind of sort of made sense. Back in the day, he did. He also said stupidness like, oh, I put Venus fly trap or whatever in people's drink. You know, he said foolishness. And yeah. people, and Johnny Carson laughed yeah. at it. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Because now, that was the thing I disagree. back then. You can't share any Bill Cosby shit now. Yeah. Look, if you were like, hey, this was a, a scene from a show and there were 27 people in and he was one of them, maybe. But I think at this point, you're like, here's a here's a cool Hitler quote. <laughs> you know what Hitler says? Hitler says, I know, you know, we don't agree with him, but uh, Hitler says, uh, uh, you know what? No, but you, see, don't, you don't get to share that. Then if that's the case, we got to like stop doing any kind of movies that are about Lovecraft. We got to stop doing any kind of thing. You know, there's a whole lot of things. You're absolutely right about the Hitler thing, but people make movies about Hitler or God forbid, you know, the thing, horrible things that he did. People are making money off of that's true. the whole Holocaust so usually, thing. But usually yeah. we kill him at the end and that's like exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. Are we talking about die. some inglorious yeah, bastards? Dies at the end. You keep making them because then we're like Nazis. All Ooh. I know is, and then we yeah. kill him All like I know is, you know, I don't, I don't watch old reruns, but there are reruns of Cosby Show still on, on the black channels. Like TV One, they still bounce. They still play Cosby Show. They're not going to play them on anything else. And unfortunately, the people who were on that show, they ain't going to make no real residuals from TV One. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's still on there. So whoever wants to watch it, let them watch it. You know what I mean? But I just don't think that the people who worked on that show hard every single day should lose their residuals because of what that one man did. Because nobody is stopping Shakespeare in Love. Harvey Weinstein is the one who produced Shakespeare in Love. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're going to stop everything, then stop everybody. Yeah. That's all, That's the only point I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. People Except are still... But I'll tell you why. In one reason. Like, we don't have to see Harry... We don't have to see... Harvey. 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 Harvey sorry. Yeah. His face... Over True. and over again. He produced it, but he's not you know, in it. You're yeah, right. If it Absolutely was the right. That he was in, and we don't I want to see his face because his face is hideous. <laughs> I agree. But I think but, it's kind of you know, hot. <laughs> see? But foolish. Here's the alley. Oh, that's and, bullshit. And guess who else is hideous now? Cosby. I bet you if he hadn't done all those hideous things in his life, he wouldn't look as horrible as he looks now with that Ugh. little cleft eye and that little bumpy face. He, You know what I mean? He looks like a monster now. Because yeah. <laughs> the insides have come out. The insides have come out. That's true. Yeah. Well, you're on fire today, Alan. I am. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't even have a drink. 
I don't. I, I'm thirsty as heck too, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, I forgot we'll you don't drink. It's I don't drink. Only I don't drink. drink. Oh. No, I know we're getting riled up and everything, but but this is really a safe place to ask questions. Yes, it is. Right? It really is, and I feel like we don't get to, like I wasn't. I did. I couldn't even feel like I could say. Uh, you know, I'm just curious why we're sharing about Bill Cosby. I couldn't that. I couldn't. And you that still can. Yeah. And you still can. How long ago was that? I mean, you, you just say, can. oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can. I didn't. What the rapists say, I didn't. Exactly. How, has anyone, um, are any of your people watching this right now? I don't know. You, should, you know who you are. So you should send this link to them. Yeah. And that way you don't have to say it. But then they'll see it. They'll be like, oh, wow. We didn't know she Wait, felt that, that way. Man? We didn't know. She felt they that way. Send them a the thing. Maybe, but should... I, maybe I'll ask the person that shared yeah. it. I'll send the, the link. Maybe it. they but don't I, even but, know. You but send it right to there. me. Well, send me the link, please. Okay, I, I, I just want to see it. I just want to understand what their yeah. reasoning was okay, for even sending it to you. We still like Michael Jackson. No, I do. I, I do. I don't know. I, I do. And I just watched the thing on a documentary, um, Corey, Corey Feldman, who said that Michael Jackson never did anything to me. I was with him alone all the time, blah, blah, blah. And the same thing with um, um, Home Alone. Um, 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 talking. I was alone with him all the time. He never did anything to me. So there's but always going to be I a know. thing. But that, that doesn't mean. But listen, let me, let, me, let me finish. The people who are saying he did things yeah. are people who also got money from him to pay for their house. Their child, they let stay in that place. And then all of a sudden, there's a lawsuit and they got money from Michael Jackson to pay for their homes. This is the problem I have with it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And one no. of the guys, what, yes, one no, of the what do men, mean? What, do you mean? what I'm saying is it was about money. They charged him and they got a settlement from him and then they paid for their house. If my son really was raped by you, I'm not going to take a penny from you. I want you under the jail. Yeah, but I want you was, under the jail. That does, I, that, that I'm not taking a settlement from you. But women, you could say that about women who get sexually abused by men and then they... they no, so. I'm talking about a child that I left in your care and oh, then no. all of a sudden I'm taking a settlement and you raped my child and I'm okay with that because you gave me a settlement and now I'm paying for a house. That's different than a woman. I don't think it's the same either. I think there's I this place where, you know, I, my guess is that a lot of people, assuming that he did it, uh, I think a lot of people are like, look, no one's... Michael Jackson's not going to fucking jail. And so if, if nothing else, we get this. This is the best that we're going to fucking get. And then they do it. And they're probably, and don't use the F-bomb. But people are going to do it, right? This is the best that they can do. They're not all Macaulay Culkins. They're not all these people that are doing, they're not all great actor kids. Some of these are families that not only was it the best they're going to get from this potential lawsuit, that's probably the best they're going to get in their whole lives. And so this is their reparations and probably the only reparations from this they're going to get. They're not so all is that why they that. left their child with a 40-year-old man? I don't to think they the knew night. what was happening at the time. And okay. look, it's Michael Jackson. All I'm so. saying is there was one father who got a settlement from him, and then that father committed suicide. After you got the money, you committed suicide? Well, because maybe you know, well, I don't know. Maybe you know you shouldn't have taken money for your rape of your child, and then really and truly there was no proof that it really did. I'm not listen, I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse so there's no way in the world i would really defend a person that i really believed did this however i will say the people who were already stars the kids that he spent time with he didn't touch them he's like oh i better not touch them because if they tell then or i'm going to get in trouble he didn't touch them why would they lie Corey feldman talks about everybody else who did stuff to him yeah. he's very honest about everything and Michael Jackson is dead, so why would he lie now? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Now, trust and believe. Michael Jackson was a little child mentally because I believe that a lot of the stuff he saw and was interacting with when he was five years old on the road with his father, who sure. was definitely sleeping with a bunch of people and all his brothers in the room sleeping with a bunch of people, and he's a little kid seeing all of that, and who knows, one of the girls was like, oh, you kind of cute too, and probably messed with him a little bit too. You know what I mean? I would not be surprised. He was not a grown man. Sure. Now, Doesn't excuse he, it. Doesn't excuse it, no. but I don't think he had sex with him. I would say... And I know this for a fact because kids used to do this to me. I would say he might have touched 
just as kids sometimes do when they're young, touching inappropriately to each other. I guess y'all y'all grew up in a different world than I did because you don't you don't y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Trust me, I, I know. I just don't I know make it right. I know kids, you know what I'm saying? Kids touch and do weird stuff to each other when they're kids. But he's not 40 year old. I don't he's care. He's not. He's Neverland. They these parents left him alone I, with I their kids. But so and they should not have taken not money. They should have done everything they did to make sure he was under the jail. Well, that's yeah, what I'm but saying. But I don't think the system. Yeah, there's no way they would have won, and they did it. Yeah, I don't know why that father killed himself. Then after you got the money, why you killed well, yourself? We don't also know what's going on in the family. Like I don't know. You're just like, I mean, guilt's a thing. Know. Yeah, I mean, guilt's a real thing too, yeah. right? Like there's doing the thing you think is right, finding out later that that thing wasn't right. That doesn't mean that you're a terrible person. Like there's a there's a cycle of so that these things yourself. can happen. I don't think you should, and, but the fact that he did. did. Yeah, this is I'm rough. Saying yeah. yeah. Woo, June, you are fiery. But that's okay. We need that. We need fire. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I mean, we all feel safely, right? We do. We all Listen, let me tell you something. When OJ Simpson, and I'm not defending that animal. If you defend OJ nope, Simpson, I'm we got to shut this thing I'm down. I'm not. But I'm going to tell you. I am going to go buy a Bronco. I'm going <laughs> to tell you. White people gasped and black people cheered. I know. And, I don't not be, and I'm going to tell you why. Because of Emmett Till. Because of every black man that was accused of even looking at a white woman and was lynched and killed and maimed and all kinds of stuff. So, in other words, that was the one because everybody thought, oh, well, he's black. He's going to jail. He's killing a white girl. Oh, he's going to jail. It doesn't make sense. But that was a weird reparations. Yeah, he should have gone to the gym. Yeah, that was a weird reputation. He went wrong, and then he was wrong, an asshole wrong. and did all the stupidness afterwards too. Clown, you clown, you stupid clown. Just stay quiet. Why are you still doing foolishness? But that's him. He's an asshole. But I'm just saying. The juice. Black people cheered. I did not. I was very upset about it. I was not. Yeah, I was very, very angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if it had been Marguerite Simpson, his first wife, we wouldn't have heard anything about it. Oh. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's probably true, too. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to sleep sleep now. Night, night. <laughs> We're going to get comments, but also, well, yeah. we don't condone OJ. Yes. All right. I'm not supporting that asshole. Okay, we got to... Two out of three scientists. Three. I'm not supporting that gentleman. I have a comment. Hey, um, Megan. It's uh, someone named Michelle says i am the one who posted the video on bill cosby the video was michelle thank you for commenting on so what did she say here what oh did my she god say? Yes, tell us. yes tell us uh the video was from at least 40 years ago he gives examples of how black history has been hidden from black people mm. you have to see the video to see how bold it was back then to point out these facts i knew i knew i wanted to see it i definitely wanted to see it thank you michelle yeah 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 okay. But does it doesn't change your feeling about it too much, right? Not. I mean, we just want to find a better representative. Yeah. If there's, he's he. I mean, he did, did this really great, and it has done a lot of great things. There's this hope. Uh, I I read a thing that uh, the more uh, the more good things you've done in the world, the faster we're willing to forgive your monstrous acts, and so it is. There are so many people who have done, like, and, and we'll talk small, right? Uh, Gandhi, big piece per great. Yes. Let his wife die, wouldn't let her take medication. Mm. Then when she died, he was like, oh, snap. And then mm. took it, right? Mm. Right? So the, there's these people that we go, oh, like if he'd just been some dude, we'd be like, man, that's messed up. But he was gone. Mm -hmm. and did, right. And so the the more amazing Michael Jackson, if that had just been my cousin, everyone would be like, oh, that dude did all those kids. And we wouldn't be like, oh, but he had a bad child. We'd be like, nope, jail, jail or worse. Mm -hmm. Right. It just would have been a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Michael Jackson was the, the grandfather like he did. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think there is this place where. So often uh, and so but. It would be great to find that these people weren't the only ones, right? So Bill Cosby might have been this great speaker and a philanthropist and a representative for Black people, and he did this 
horrific thing. There's got to be someone else who also said something clever. Right. Who also mm-hmm. didn't. You know what? Maybe he's not black, but find something Tom Hanks did. He ain't do nothing bad to anybody. I hope. I hope he didn't. But I'll let Tom Hanks say something about it, right? Did he, though, because you're right. Like, Bill Cosby did so much. So much. But so did Nixon. Nixon did a lot of great things, but we only know Watergate about him. Yeah. He did a lot of great things when he was president. You know what I mean? I yeah. love history, so I study these things. Yeah. But, but I'm not going to get a Nixon poster. I'm not going to get a Nixon poster either, but I'm just saying Nixon did a lot of great things. Yeah. A lot of horrible monsters do great things, but Hitler was a great artist. Yes. Do you want to do a question? Yes. Yes, question. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. Thank you, Michelle. Yes. Yeah, and I'm going to send that link to you. Please do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and then also your job is to find someone else that says something cool. Right. Right. That's your homework. Do that for me. I want to see it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I was thinking we could talk about racist jokes. because I'm Oh, oh no. When does a joke, because jokes are hard every day. Here's where I lose my audience. <laughs> <laughs> to an individual who argues that it is just a joke. Like, oh God! I hate, that. I hate those words, frankly. And I always like teach my students, like, but again, I, this is very different. This is a classroom. But I'm like, if if there's any mean joke where you can where you say it's just a joke, I'm like, you don't get to tell those jokes. Like that's yeah. like, but again, that's a classroom. And I know that there's a different place for people to push people's buttons, to have conversations. Like yeah. the way we really dug into Bill Cosby was, was um, a black comedian making a joke about him getting away with rapes. And people are like, wait, uh, yeah, look at that. Hey, like it, you yeah. know, it was, it was him kind of doing an inappropriate, but, but he made, like he changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. By, Again, that's not a racist joke, but um, so yeah, you guys, I hear sexist jokes sometimes um, that I hate and they suck, but. Oh, I got a good one for you. Oh. I, uh, I love racist jokes. Um, Do you really? Yes. I think that they're hilarious, but most of the racist jokes that I like tend to compliment the other race or it is not all of them i would tell my favorite racist joke uh do you have it right now you have it in your mind right now Spit oh it out. yeah that's my favorite joke. okay all Do right it. forgive me everyone a guy is running why it's important for the story and he's running along the beach and he see he trips over a lamp i'm gonna say Start again. Do it loud. We have a lot of rain and thunder. Yeah. Ah, can't rain. hear you. Thunder yeah. bolts and lightning. It's very, very uh, Start again loud. All right. White guy running on the beach. Trips over a lamp. Picks it up. He's like, what is this? Really a lamp? No way. And he rubs it. Smoke comes out. Two genies. And he says, oh, my God. Do I get twice the wishes? And the one genie says, no, no. This is my apprentice genie. He's going to handle the jokes or handle your, your wishes. And the guy's like, cool. And he makes his three wishes. And he goes home. And he opens the door. There's a bunch of half-naked women inside. And they all call to him. And he's like, oh, yeah. Wish number one. And he goes and he has sex with all the women. Then he wakes up after a a well-deserved nap. And he opens the door. And there are these security guards outside. And they're like, hey, your delivery's here. And he looks out. And these security guards are just loading in a bunch of money. And they just throwing money into his house. And he's like, wish two. And he goes back in. And he has sex with the women. Then the doorbell rings, and he goes to the door, and he opens it, and it's two clansmen. And they grab him, and they beat him with a stick, and they hang him from a tree. And the two clansmen take off their hoods, and it's those two genies. And the apprentice genie says, I get the first two wishes, but why do you want to be hung like a black man? Oh. <laughs> ah! Ah! But that's good. And you see, the reason it's good is because it's not making fun of black people. Right? Kind of making it's fun of black making people. fun. No, because black men need being hung like a black man. So you're not. No making... black guy I've ever told that joke to is like, oh, I nah, can't even. What? No, not even one. Wait, wait, not even one black guy has liked that joke. Oh no, no one. They no. 
No, oh, they've never listen. complained. Never oh, one black exactly. guy is like. And so that's why it's funny because how dare you, black sir? People exactly because black people, especially black men, like to hear that. Oh yeah, we are hung. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's also a horrible thing, hung. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the double, you know, yeah. whatever entendre. So now you can't explain the it's joke, not. I'm, no, no, no. But I'm just saying that's why it's funny. It's it. It would be it would be horrible yes. if it had been something else. If yeah, you punch them, like ah, hung them, and then they just. And yeah, like that's, yeah, the Klansman, yeah. they're like saying, well, that's mm-hmm. what happened. Oh, you know well, what I mean? That, it wouldn't have been funny. He got yeah. up, but he, but it was, he was that was a brilliant joke. It's a brilliant joke. Yeah. It's a brilliant but joke. But it's not. Tell your friends, but not if you're white. But again, you know what? You guys can tell it too. It doesn't. The reason it works and the reason I laughed, we all laughed, is because it's not a joke that makes fun of black people. Yes. Right. Now, tell me right. a black joke or any kind of joke that makes fun of black people. Mm. It's not going to be so funny. Yeah. Well, you're not saying? challenging me, are you? Bring it on. No, I Bring mean... it. Mm-mm, you see terrible. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-mm. And that's what's tricky about it. Oh, I'm glad it's oh, right. No. Where where did you hear it? But the the other like the one that you were on. Did a white person tell you that or a black person told you that? <laughs> no, a black person told me that one. See, and that's the difference. Yeah. If a white person had said that same joke, if Jerry Seinfeld said that same joke, no, that's I don't know funny. if it would have worked. The, the genie joke? I don't, I don't know care who tells worked. that joke. That's quality. It's beautiful, but I just don't know. Someone look it up. Who who someone had to have written because, that joke. That's a joke. No, it had, it had like had a work that I was workshop. It was. It had to be workshop in the comedy cellar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caroline's. You no, know, maybe they, Kramer. Kramer probably told that joke. Oh, now question. Kramer got into trouble. Did, okay, yeah. so, but have white people told you racist jokes? Yes. Yes. Will Burr is very good at making racial jokes. Will Burr? Will Burr. His name is Will. You guys don't know who Will Burr is. He's a big time comedian. A white comedian. Okay, no, I'll look him up. Look him okay. up. Bill Burr? Oh, Bill Burr. But his real name is William. That's what I'm okay. saying, so I would say Will. Nobody Bill calls him Burr. William. But I'm just saying. He, William Burr, oh, you're one of our favorites. On his Instagram, it says William, so that's why I said yes. Will. Okay. But anyway, right. Bill Burr. He does Burr. tell a lot of yes. racist jokes. Bill Burr does a lot of, but he's also married to a black woman. So I let him get away with stuff because I know he's married to a black woman. You see what I'm saying? He'll make fun of his black wife. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah, and I like a racist joke. I like I Bill I Burr. Mind. I like Bill Burr because, you know, because he's like the only white comedian that I know that constantly will say stuff and he doesn't care. I don't care. You know what I mean? And I, I love the jokes you got. This is what it comes down to. I think so. <sighs> comedy. I think that comedy, most funny things to me are things that are shocking. That tends to be where a lot of comedians shine, right? The court jester, his whole thing was to be able to say ridiculous shit and not get in trouble. And he was the only person that could point out bad shit that the king was doing. And so I think he had to be careful. Often, could be off of sometimes head. he get he get uh, whacked, but <laughs> but in the end, I think the uh, the idea of comedy is often to point out some of those ridiculous things. And so if you're a white comedian just mad ripping fun of black people that's very different than pointing out where some racism would happen and throwing a dave attell like a joke out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we're all like oh, oh yeah. god ha yeah i got black friends just like that and then you're right. just like and it's a one shocking thing right but if he had a 30 minute set that was like black people am i right you know then that's yeah. very different yeah right so for me a racist joke does the thing that it's supposed to do it calls out these ridiculous sort of stereotypes mm-hmm. and we're all supposed to laugh at them uncomfortably again yeah. it's sort of my defense mechanism right for a thing that we aren't allowed to forget segue but i'm in a play right now that is about very serious play about the sandy hook massacre oh God. uh why would we do such a play because people shouldn't forget it that's right and i think that we can have these conversations and it's great but I also think that comedy is this way of easing people into some of those ridiculous things. And so when Cat Williams is up there just ranting and raving about stuff, those things are based on some reality, but we get to laugh about it too. And I think that that really matters for people who may never get to have these conversations that we're having, but at least they get to hear them somewhere. They get to hear these insane things that are out there and hopefully they recognize that they're insane and they're not like yeah that's right <laughs> right I we don't want that the, the, like that i feel like it's intent and then audience because if you go to a trump rally perhaps and you tell a racist joke i think the 
It's like, yeah, that's true. Yes. But that's... that joke you just told would not go well at a Trump rally. <laughs> yeah. No. No. But I'm gonna I'm gonna email that to Trump. Oh, I yeah. got a joke for you. Yeah, that one. I mean, like, when is a joke? When is a joke good because it points out stuff or it reminds us of stuff or it shocks us in in a way that's helpful, as opposed to it can it continues to put people less than. Like, what yeah, is that? I like? think it's a very fine line, and I think the problem with that problem with anything that's a fine line is it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I can tell that joke I just told. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, nope, click. They clicked out right mm -hmm. away, right? But other people are like, oh my God, I'm gonna, that that clip will be sent. Oh my God, if that clip gets sent everywhere, I'm in, right? Yeah, you're in. Oh, I love it, right? So I think the problem with things that are fine line like that is it depends on the audience. And so there are some people that you can tell a racist joke to and they get it and they get where you're coming from, especially if there's one or two. Mm -hmm. Again, you just tell a litany of racist jokes. Then it gets there's some point much. where I'm like, yeah, then it gets okay, too much. now wait. What's going on? You know, I, I, I've got white friends that will, OK, I heard a joke. I got to tell you, you know, like I got a racist joke for you. I'm like, all right, bring it. And it's and they're funny. But they're your friends. But they're my friends. But they don't just stand up one day and go. Hi, uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, thanks for coming to our talk. I have a joke. And then you just throw some racist joke. I don't know why. Michelle Obama, if you're watching. Um, well, you love you. I love you. I love you so much. I love you, Michelle Obama. Um, yeah. I, I, so I think it's really that. I think it crosses the line for one person. And you talked earlier about microaggressions and being afraid to say anything. And, and I get that, too. But I say, risk offending people. Now, I'm not saying go out and be a, so yeah, I almost dropped another F-bomb. Don't go out and be a jerk. Not what I'm saying, right? But I think in instances, we talk about microaggressions and saying stuff about people's hair. Ask about, if you don't know, ask, ask me about my hair, right? Like, I, I think I would rather people err on the side of trying to understand personally than I would people being too afraid to approach me, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many things have I missed from legitimate white people who want to be my friend or invite me on a board or have me come talk because they're afraid to walk up to me and say, hey, we have no diversity on our board of directors. We would uh, like you to be on. No, I can't say that. Now nah, I'm just going to go get the next white person that I see. Right. I would much rather people risk a little bit. We're back to that place where it's uncomfortable. Some people will snap at you, but some people won't. And so I think racist jokes tend to fit into that same place, right? If it's coming from a place of funny or fun or levity or trying to lighten a thing or pointing out even an absurdity, great. And even then, some people won't like it. Choose your audience. But if you're telling racist jokes, as you're like, you know who I hate? Black people. Here's a bunch of jokes about it. That's real different, right? Yeah. And well, the I, preface yeah. already kills it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like black people? Well, let me tell you some jokes about them, just in case you do. Uh, but yeah, I think that's I, that. The line is really hard, and I don't think you can give it a direct answer. But I also, yeah, I, I, it comes back to intent again. It does. Can I ask you guys? Because I know we might be running out of time, but I think this is important for people to understand. And I have only like learned about a lot of these things just by educating and talking and whatever. But just like. What are some just like everyday racist things that happen? Like we've talked about people get uh, like healthcare isn't as good because you're not believed. Um, people get stopped more often. But is there more? I think more people are a little bit more aware of those things now because it's talked about. But there, there must be also other things. We've talked about your hair, but are like, are there any other things that you guys could share or be willing to share that might be helpful? Some of them are assumptions is sort of an issue, right? And I, and I have to make the assumption based on the deliverer and sometimes the look. But one of the ones that I've gotten a lot, and I almost stopped doing it, at Home Depot, there is veteran parking. 
as we've discussed, I'm an Air Force veteran, security police. That's right. But I can't tell you how many times I've pulled into a space and gotten out and someone looked over at me and said, are you a veteran? That goes back to the patriotic thing. I was like, why wouldn't I be a veteran? Because I'm 15. I got dreads now. How dare they? Right? Like, so why is the assumption? Now, I've also just made an assumption. Maybe that same older white person that I think this has happened to me three times, maybe. Maybe those different people. Maybe those three people ask everyone that parks. They don't. But I doubt it, right? And so they that's don't. one of the things where you get this assumption made about you. Mm. Um, just sort of based on, God like, you know. God bless America. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 I'm a very Afrocentric person, but I am also patriotic to my bone. Yeah. But you wouldn't know that. If you just make an assumption about the way I look. Yeah. Yeah. You're not so patriotic, though, that you like James Taylor. I do like James Taylor. James Taylor. I love James Taylor. I love Barry Manilow. I'm a fan of love. Did you say fan of love? Yes. Fox. Don't tell you can't. Cannot. James Taylor, if you're listening. What? Sorry. I mean, yikes. Oh, I love James God. Taylor. Oh my gosh. Well, so that's one. That's fascinating. Okay, so give me more. Mm, what else? Let's see. That's a big one. That's a big one. That, that yeah. hurts. That yeah. hurt me. You know what hasn't happened to me in a long time is people following me around the store. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, that used to yeah, happen to me. That used to happen a younger. lot, but it doesn't happen anymore. Yep. Um, Especially if I have a baseball cap and my hair used to be shaved. Remember I told you my hair used to be yeah. shaved? I have a baseball cap, so they think I'm a black boy. And I look at them and they're like, oh, oh sorry, sorry, ma'am. And they walk away. So when you thought, when I had my hair shaved on the side, I had my fade, you know what I'm saying? And my baseball cap, it was okay for you to follow me around. Yeah. Hmm. What else happens to me? What else do racists do to me? I think we're just happy. Body bothers up. I mean, the other issue. Delightful. Is that we are in a very, we're in a very good bubble. I'm not trying to get everybody to move to the triangle. Please don't. It's a great place. But. It's a good bubble. But you don't have to go that far to be out of the bubble. No, no, you really don't. I mean. Uh, it's real. It's it's right. I see Confederate flags in these back rolls, honey. Hey, what's up with the Confederate flags? Everyone says, oh, we're just celebrating our history, right? But um, What are you celebrating? You lost. I don't get it. I, what are you celebrating? Someone celebrating. said watching firefly which was maybe one of the greatest sci-fi shows ever created after farscape that the brown coats are just uh old confederates that lost they just they lost and now mal can't get over it mal malcolm reynolds is just a dude wearing his brown coat that can't get over the fact that that they lost and i was like oh that's oh that's a very different image of firefly now but uh, it makes sense. Anyway, um, shoot us an email. Uh, put in the comments, uh, in the comments. Uh, a little defense for you know. I get it. I, one of the things I've never understood that Civil War reenactors like this is a terrible time in our world. Why? Why? Sure. Why? Yeah. Why? Why this? Why reenact that? Why can't we reenact the time where someone's grandma gave birth to the? I don't know. There's going to be better things. It just. It just seems weird that the time that Americans were all murdering each other over states' rights uh, was just, yeah, it seems like a horrific thing. Time and they lost. And they lost. We, before we go, I want to yeah. just put this challenge out there. Is there a white male that we can have sitting with the four of us, with yeah. the three of us one time? We got that honey white. smelling man we can bring. We can bring that honey smelling man if he's interested. But yeah, I mean, just so we can get a, a, a yeah. kind of a well rounded thing, uh, you know, from a white male perspective. Talk, talking we to promise us it about, won't be uncomfortable even a little bit. I just want to sniff you, honey smelling man. But yeah, if we can, if we can do that, you know, we can't, it, can't be, it can't be Josh. Really? He's too close to all this. We got to bring in. Yeah, I know y'all know white people. I don't know no white people here because I just moved here. But I'm just saying. You literally just said you had a lot of white friends. 
It's not in, in North Carolina, oh, in New gotcha. York, in California, in Texas. Are you like kidding me? A southern white man would be really cool. That's what we need. We I, need a good old I just boy. thought of like good four, five, six people. I got so many people. Good. All right, good. A southern old let's, let's Let's have a white guy here because I just yeah. want to hear. And if it's any of the people I'm bringing in, they are going to yeah. be on call. Are they your friends? I don't want nobody killing us. Somebody <laughs> who's your friend. Yeah, I just thought of some randos that I'm going to go. I just want to make sure they're your friend. Yeah. Ain't no telling what white men will do now. <laughs> Shoot. No, the opinions of all of us do not uh, reflect the opinions of the studio. Magic fights? No, <laughs> they are Elizabeth June Boom. only. Okay. Uh, yes, I think that actually is a really good idea. So, just yeah. because you know what I mean, yeah. because this is kind of like 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 sided, two sided, and then you you just need somebody over there, or let's boy girl, boy girl, or something. You know what I mean? Just mix it up. Yeah. 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 But I would like I'm not from so I'm from Canada, so I'm not even from here. But I would love to get more of a I mean someone that's not aggressive, but more of a, a, a southern uh someone that grew up here. Yeah. Like, you want older? That would be great. Like old, it could be older, but... it could be young, you know, but just somebody who grew up here because you grew up here. Yeah, we don't like want... we're the ones that are outsiders. You we don't want any of these millennials or whatever coming here talking about that stuff. But you never know. Millennials know what's up. Uh, millennial is the one giving us these questions. So hello. Right. <laughs> Great. You want to bake for us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just stop. Okay. I, okay. So, yeah. Time comments. So, question. Uh, it is currently nine thirty-seven. Oh, wow. I'm thinking. Oh, this is a one-hour show. Two. This is a two-hour show. Wait a minute. Oh, two hours. Hours. Okay. Round nice wrap-up question. Okay. Wrap it. So love to know uh, a. Or some sort of other uh, media resource that you think would be a good way for somebody who's seeking to educate themselves about being anti-racist mm, wow. in their everyday life. Do you have any recommendations like that that we could give people to round us out? Yeah, I'll start. I would watch this show. Well, that's the best I got. I trying to think of thing. I wanted to make sure I got that before one of you two stole. Well, it's good. Uh, it's good yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a bunch. Is the problem? Yeah. Um, it's a good problem to have. There's a bunch, and also I haven't read a lot of them. Uh, I myself, as I pointed out earlier, am black. So, uh, and I have a lot of white friends. Like, so we're we're doing a lot of that work. I do a lot of. Uh, DEI work uh, in general. So I DEI. think finding, yes. Explain what DEI means. Uh, I just lost the name of it. Diversity, equity, equity and inclusion. inclusion. Thank you. Because even I didn't know what that was until like just last year. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't work in an office place. I don't work where a lot of people say the, that yeah. term. So a friend of mine was like, you know what that is? I'm like, uh, no, what do you mean by that? And then, of course, I understood. I knew diversity was a thing that trying to get into corporate America more, so yeah. whatever, but the DEI doesn't need to explain what that yeah. is. And you know, yeah. nowadays, the Republicans are saying didn't earn it. <laughs> Babe, didn't earn it. And I put a whole thing on my Facebook though about, wow. about talk about didn't earn it, please. We're the ones who like built... I'm trying you know, to make yeah. mad. Anyway, mad. exactly. But, so, yeah. Um, books that I've read... White Fragility, I think it's a good a book good for all white people to read, please. And it's written by a white person. It's one of your own. Um, then I want to say just some of my top favorite books. I hate to say this word, but this is the title of the book. It's by Dick Gregory. It's called Nigger. That's the name of the book. It's one of the most amazing books I've ever read. How old is this book? It's old, but it's an amazing book. And it's by Dick Gregory. So that book is amazing and had a big impact on me. I've read it more than once. Um, another book, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. It's a beautiful book, but it talks about what it is to be a little black girl in America and wanting the bluest eye, that kind of a thing. Um, these are the kind of things that, that have... The Autobiography of Malcolm X is an amazing book, and it you know blew me away. So those are like my top three by black people, and then, of course, White Fragility by one of your own. So, yeah. I'm a studies person, and uh, you can find them everywhere. There are so many studies on race, and uh, even if you are looking for something on the biased side, right? They they tend to talk about uh, one of the reasons that I like studies is that they're less opinions. I mean, when, we won't get into science, um, but there are some there are less opinions by them, and if you got good studies, they're peer reviewed, blah blah blah, and so and, and their studies 
that aren't just on uh, race in everyday culture, but race in a business setting, why diversity actually matters. There is evidence that says that a more diverse workforce actually makes a company more money. So why, if you're just a person that only cares about money, now you still got to do this, right? Like, and so you, when you, when you're a person that's like, well, it's all about the money and about people being fair and all that. If it really was, then you would do it. If when you don't do it intentionally, you're just racist, right? Because the money is where diversity lies. And so these uh, studies everywhere, and you know, they all have long names. I wish I could say, do the study on blah, blah. Um, we talked about the Monopoly study. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. Uh, Dr. Seligman. Uh, his studies on um, learned helplessness. Uh, a lot of these talk specifically about race and and why different races sort of act the way that they do. And so, yeah, I would just look up as many studies as you can find. You don't have to read them all. They can be a little dry, but uh, there's a lot of information out there that is real if you're worried about reading something that's just someone's opinion. Thank you. And the well, the like if it's not in book form, there's books nowadays. But I feel like sometimes what's hard now is when you look up a, look up something, it's hard to know. I mean, you have to trust the source yeah. because nowadays, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene can look up something mm-hmm. that proves her point, and it's yeah, yeah. and Candace Owens, yeah, they all yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so is there a specific place like people can go so they can trust the? Oh, that I do not have. I mean, yeah, I'm a chat GPT person, so uh, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask about. Just you can put anything out there in the world these days, but you know, I think that's one of the reasons that I do like the studies more because there's more people. They're not immune just because it's a study doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent by any means, right? So we could talk about that's a whole different thing, but I do feel that they're a little bit more. Um, I have a little bit more trust in those. And I'm not talking about like Wikipedia pages, like go find some real studies and things that are out there. Yeah. Uh, books that are popular, more people are commenting on them. So I think if, uh, you know, if you're reading things that eight people reviewed on Amazon, you know, there's mm-hmm. nothing I can do for that. But I think some right. of these big ones, mm-hmm. you can, you can hear different people's opinions on them. And I think that makes a big difference, mm-hmm. but I don't think we're, I, I don't know if we'll ever be able to get back to a place where we can just trust a thing unless yeah. you have a source that you just know they curate everything exactly the way that you want or what have you. But yeah, yeah. nothing that I would trust 100%. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This was, this was, you know, you guys, thank you. Thank you. No, it was awesome. Yeah. It's a great venue, a great yeah. thing to be talking about for yeah. people. Yeah. So, well, I hope you guys also got a lot out of it, but I like every time we talk, like new information comes out or we just like a new topic or some, new things that I'm like, oh, I want to read that or I want to yeah. educate myself with that or whatever. It's just, and it's great. You're right. I think a, a, a white male next time joining us will be like a oh, whole different, that. you know, yeah. dynamic. So mm-hmm. we'll do that. I like it. Someone who's talkative. Yeah. I yeah. don't want him just sitting and looking, getting scared. Yeah. Because I'll be saying crazy stuff and be like, ooh, she's frightening. And I know I am, but you know. No. I dated white guys before. Wow, white people like me. Strong <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Right now. June is so. Uh, I love their artistry. Amazing. Google them. They are amazing. Both of them, their artistry. But don't Google deep. Oh Lord, got secrets, Jesus. That good? All right, we're good. Thank you. And it worked this time, June. Nice. Thank you. That was great.